Queen's last day of lying in state before state funeral on Monday. The grand state funeral of Queen Elizabeth II will be held on Monday at the Westminster Abbey in London. The doors to Westminster Abbey will open at 8 a.m. local time for around 2,000 guests, including 500 world leaders. King Charles met Commonwealth leaders at the Buckingham Palace ahead of Queen Elizabeth's state funeral. Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau and other world leaders paid respect to the Queen. President Draupadi Murmu also reached London to attend the funeral of Britain's longest reigning monarch. Meanwhile, Prince William and Harry stood vigil at either end's Queen's coffin in full military uniform. Prince Harry, who was banned from wearing uniform, was allowed to wear the same on the special request of King Charles III. Remember Queen Elizabeth, who passed away at the age of 96 at her summer residence, Balmoral Castle, in Scotland on 8th of September, will be buried with her late husband, Prince Philip. Uh, we know it's uh, uh, unprecedented in terms of our city. Our city will never have seen uh, this many people. And you've got to remember, earlier on this year, we had uh, uh, Her Majesty's Platinum Jubilee. Uh, we're a city that's had uh, Olympics in 2012. Uh, we, uh, we undertook uh, the Queen Mother's funeral, Princess Diana's funeral. We have carnivals in Nottingham every year. We have the marathon. We have massive events with the Euros, of course. Uh, this is nothing like that. Uh, this is the biggest police operation ever. My colleague Lavina is now joining us from London to bring us up to speed with the very latest. Lavina, what's the mood like at the moment? Uh, heads of state are now paying homage to the Queen. Uh, how many uh, have gathered over there and what is tomorrow looking like? I don't know if you can see behind me, for this heads of state, you can only see heads in entire London and even in Windsor because this entire funeral, when it starts from 11, 11 a.m., the Westminster Abbey has all the, all the ceremonies and then the procession will go all the way to Windsor. There are only, only heads. As far as heads of state go, uh, we have close to 20 prime ministers, close to 20 um, uh, monarchs and uh, even President Biden is touching uh, now and uh, almost 118 to 120 representatives are already here. So, uh, and, and the Westminster Abbey, as you said, can accommodate about 2,000. It's actually about 2,200 people of them, 500 being dignitaries and even the people are allowed to go inside free of cost. But it's, it's really, really chock-a-block and uh, it, the mood is just to be able to say goodbye. And as, as you said, Sajid, uh, you heard the mayor of London saying the biggest operation ever that Scotland Yard has handled. And this is even more than the Pope's funeral. I have been taking, uh, I have been talking to various journalists. The whole world uh, of, of journalists, the world pool of journalists are here as well and immense and lots of steam. So it's just to get that glimpse. They have just taken the morning and the funeral of the Queen to... Stand your camera, Lavina, and show us the mood and the people who have gathered right there oh in London. God. If you could yes, just span yes. your camera. Yes, I am, I am, and I can show you the number of people. Remember, these people are not only people who have come to see, but also people who want to just... Uh, uh, to, to go from one place to the other, that has become very, very difficult. Can I speak to you, sir? And, and okay, can I speak to you if you like? On, on, are you here for the uh, funeral? And are you here to uh, be for tomorrow? Uh, just come up today. You have just come up today. Where have you come from, sir, ma'am? Buckingham. Buckingham Palace. Buckinghamshire. Buckinghamshire, sorry. You're coming all the way from Buckinghamshire. The, I don't know if you can hear this beautiful lady who's come. How far, how long do you think you're going to be parking yourself here? I don't know. I'll uh, do it for Are you packed with some food and stuff? We're only here for the day. We've been in and seen the Queen. We're just coming out now. Oh, brilliant. Thank you very much. Someone who has managed to go and see the Queen. You're looking quite impeccable. How many hours did you have to wait? Five hours. Couple of hours. Brilliant, thank you. So, uh, there, uh, a pair who have come from, a couple who have come from Buckinghamshire have been able, have managed to see the Queen, but the uh, authorities here are saying stop, see the Queen on the television uh, or, or see on the television uh, telecast, but stop coming for the queues because the queues have just been too much and, and uh, there's a stop. 
uh, have, that has been put on the queues. But some people who have managed to see the queen are now making their way to see if they can stay back for the funeral or they just go back. So they're all mix of people here, Chetty, who want to be. But seriously, I will turn your, I'll turn the camera again to show you. How, it's just heads. When you walk, you walk like a snail and is a sea of heads uh, in, in London. Can you see? Are you able to see? Absolutely, we can see. Absolutely. Stay at it. It's just, uh, it's a, I can show you around. So where I am right now is Westminster Abbey. I was trying to reach Westminster, sorry, Westminster, and I was trying to reach Westminster Abbey. It's just across the road. And it is absolutely impossible because uh, the, going from one place to the other that takes two minutes is taking about an hour. Um, and uh, these people are trying to go from one place to the other and some are going to just stay back now. I met a few people in Buckingham uh, Palace who were parked there since Thursday trying to, uh, trying to be there till, uh, till, this, um, till Monday to be able to see uh, and witness the royal family going and joining the funeral because you see a, a lot of stuff is happening. It's not only the people and the dignitaries, but the royal family are taking their position slowly and steadily to uh, give their respect because after all, the queen was someone's mother, someone's um, uh, great grandmother, and they want to pay their respects too, but they have to do this as for the tradition and uh, for the people to be able to, uh, along with the people of United Kingdom. Can you see here, this is just, this is um, Westminster, and uh, these are, the entire area is cordoned off. Can you see that? It's yes. The entire area is completely cordoned off, and you can only go from, uh, if you come from uh, the, the uh, Whitehall and the 10 Downing Street area first, these people are allowed it's like a it's like a square junket that keeps going round in circles. When one a set of people are let off, then the other set of people come. So uh, it is absolute <laughs> madness. Oh no, absolutely. Uh, we can see the mood around you at this point of time as well, Lavina. Queen Elizabeth II's state funeral is going to be held at Westminster Abbey on Monday, marking the end of ten days of national mourning for Britain's longest reigning monarch. Here's a report. Elizabeth Alexandra Mary was the first born of then Duke and Duchess of York. Born 21st April 1926, she was royalty but was not in the direct line of accession. Ten years late, her father acceded the throne upon the abdication of King Edward VIII. Ten-year-old Elizabeth became their heir, presumptive. She was given private education at home and public duties to perform. Her every move was designed to prepare her to become a sovereign in the future. That was her adolescence. During the Second World War, she served in the Auxiliary Territorial Services. My whole life, whether it be long or short, shall be devoted to your service and to the service of our great imperial family to which we all belong. Right as the war ended at the age of 21, Princess Elizabeth married Prince Philip in November 1947. Their seven decade old marriage is the testimony of changing fortunes of the United Kingdom and its royals. The tragic news reached Princess Elizabeth and her husband while in Kenya, and the new queen left immediately for London. Less than five years after her marriage in February 1952, King George VI passed away, and Princess Elizabeth, by then a mother of two, became the Queen Regnant. She was 25-year-old, beautiful, vulnerable, and young. Fifteen prime ministers, ranging from Winston Churchill 
Margaret Thatcher, Tony Blair, Boris Johnson, and now Liz Truss. Queen Elizabeth had the political wisdom of all kinds and remained the perfect titular head of the United Kingdom. She was hailed for her style till her daughter-in-law, Princess Diana, overshadowed all. A mother of four children, Queen Elizabeth was criticized for failing marriages of her children. The 80s and the 90s were the most cruel to her reign when tabloids reported personal affairs and indiscretions of members of the royal family. Queen Elizabeth captured the emotion perfectly in her Ruby Jubilee celebration. 1992 is not a year on which I shall look back with undiluted pleasure. <clears throat> in the words of one of my more sympathetic correspondents, it has turned out to be an annus horribilis. And then came the dreadful blow of Diana's death in the car accident of 1997. There was outpouring of grief in the United Kingdom and worldwide. The royal family and the queen in particular was criticized for their silence and seclusion. The failure to fly the flag at half-mast over Buckingham Palace. So what I say to you now, as your queen and as a grandmother, I say from my heart. First, I want to pay tribute to Diana myself. She was an exceptional and gifted human being. In good times and bad, she never lost her capacity to smile and laugh, nor to inspire others with her warmth and kindness. On the eve of the new millennium, the Queen held hands with the Duke and the British Prime Minister Tony Blair, singing All Land Sign. While she officially opened the Millennium Dome. In 2002, the Queen marked her Golden Jubilee, the 50th anniversary of her accession. Three years later, her heir, Prince Charles, married Camilla Parker Bowles, the Duchess of Cornwall. The new millennium made the Queen an adorable public figure, the grandmother of the charming princess. Quite close, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Michelle. How very Good. amazing. So you like to watch it together? Yes. Let's have a look. How very Good. amazing. So you like to watch it together? Yes. Let's have a look. Remember when you told us to bring it? She became internet savvy Careful as her grandchildren you. guided her in the ways of the millennium. Oh, really? Please. Boom. As one by one she welcomed her granddaughter-in-laws and grandchildren, Queen Elizabeth became the matriarch, loved, adored and criticized, all at one time. She survived them all with grace and dignity. Thank you, Mr. Prime Minister of Canada, for making me feel so old. <laughs> and the world's longest reigning monarch had a deep connect with India. She had made three visits to India in her lifetime. She also visited the sets of actor Kamal Hassan's film in Chennai. Take a look. The world's longest reigning monarch had a deep connect with India. Her marriage to Prince Philip in 1947 cemented that connection. The Duke of Edinburgh, after all, was the nephew of Lord Mountbatten, the last Viceroy of India. The Queen's maiden India visit was in 1961, at the invitation of the first president Rajendra Prasad. She was the first British monarch to visit India after a gap of 50 years. The tour commenced with a homage to Mahatma Gandhi at Rajghat. Then to mark Republic Day, the Queen held an address at Rajpath, now known as Kartavipath overlooked by then Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru. 
but not just the national capital, the Queen and the Duke of Edinburgh witnessed India's rich royal history across Agra and Jaipur. Fast forward to 1983, the Queen was back in India at the invitation of then President Gyani Zail Singh. It was in this visit that the Queen honoured Mother Teresa for her contribution to the society with an order of merit. And she also met with then Prime Minister Indira Gandhi. But it was her last visit to India that ruffled feathers. In 1997, when she arrived to mark 50 years of India's independence. It was her address at the Jallianwala Bagh premise where hundreds of Indians were massacred by the British that sparked wide protests across the country. The Windsors, however, did not fail to pay tribute at the Golden Temple in Amritsar. While this 1997 visit was her last to India, the Queen has hosted many Indian leaders over the years. Prime Minister Modi's visit to Buckingham Palace in 2015 and 2018 marked the last time an Indian head of state called on the Queen. With the Queen breathing her last on Thursday, this marks an end of an era for India. Bureau Report, India Today. Lavina now joins us for the latest. Lavina, there's been a lot of debate about the monarchy right there in uh, uh, UK, in India itself. But uh, Queen has also visited India thrice. And if you could tell us a little more about her visits each time and the kind of love that she ended up getting from Indians here. Not only Indians in India, but in the UK. I think it goes by the huge tradition of us. Uh, Indian and Indian origin people here in the United Kingdom being very forgiving uh, and being magnanimous and they have shown this magnanimity to the Queen and the royal family with respect for their own self and for them as well. So here in the UK uh, and in, across the past there were prayer meetings held for the Queen and they are, they were special tributes in the form of artists making murals uh, uh, making and, and making more stuff uh, for the Queen because it's a respect for the Queen. She unites. Uh, as far as charity, I must, we must reflect upon the kind of uh, voices that are raising themselves, whether it is within the United Kingdom, which is for Scotland to be a separate country, which is more political than monarchical, um, a monarchical kind of revolt or voice, but also the 14 independent countries across uh, the world uh, that have ceremony, monarch as their ceremonial heads, a lot of them are already, even before the funeral is held and the mourning period is over and King Charles' coronation takes place formally, they're already raising their voice to have become a republic and remove her. So while the queen saw the uh, downfall of, or rather the sun setting on the monarchy, King Charles will see uh, it further dimming down. And King Charles has already, before even he became a monarch, has said that he will slim down the monarchy. So can I please tell you that within the United Kingdom, there is a very strong anti-monarchy uh, sentiment and, uh, and catering to that, King Charles has reflected before that he will slim down the monarchy. So less money because the taxpayers have to pay for all their upkeep and um, they don't have to pay inheritance tax like all of us here living in the United Kingdom have to do. So a lot of those voices as well. Number two is the wider world voice which is removing the monarch as a titular or the ceremonial heads in various countries, 14 in all, not all of them are saying that. And then there is the traces of monarchy in, in various other places as you saw in India as well, changing Rajpat to Kartavyapat. So small things like this. So Britain with Brexit and now the going away of the Queen and changing of monarch is in a phase where it's becoming slow, smaller and smaller. The influence is dimming down and it's slowly becoming a island, really, if you like, that has to carve out a path for itself 
king as because monarchy here really plays the part of uh, influence and increasing the soft power of Britain in the world while politics uh, really does the job. So both monarchy and politics at this, at this point in time when have new leaders, King Charles III and Liz Truss, they have a job in hand to make sure that Britain is still relevant in the world. Thanks, uh, Lavina, for joining us for those details right there. Queen Elizabeth II, who passed away at the age of 96, was commended for her commitment to duty, but scandals involving her extended family frequently cast a shade over her reign. Here's the report. Queen Elizabeth II was a very private person living in a very public life. Mired in many debates and the target of questions, some justified, some vicious, and some unwanted. Scandals, the one revolving around Queen Elizabeth's daughter-in-law, Princess Diana, and her heir, Prince Charles, and the third in their marriage was the most vicious. The royal marriage of Prince Charles and Diana in 1981 attracted worldwide attention. It was a fairy tale wedding, but within a decade, the bubble burst. There were tabloid reports of affairs and in 1992, Charles and Diana officially announced their separation. Three years later, Diana sat down for a tell-all solo interview with journalist Martin Bashir to talk about the immense pressure of public life and her struggles with self-harm, postpartum depression and bulimia. Mrs. Parker Bowles was a factor in the breakdown of your marriage. Well, there were three of us in this marriage, so it was a bit crowded. <laughs> she admitted being unfaithful to Charles. The ugliness ended abruptly in 1997 when Princess Diana was killed in a car crash in Paris. Elizabeth's own marriage also was mired in controversy. In 1947, as soon as her engagement was announced to Prince Philip of Greece and Denmark, the young royal couple was in the middle of a scandal. Questions were raised of Prince Philip's family's lack of standing after being exiled from Greece and also for his sister's marriages to Nazi-linked Germans. The Nazi link came back haunting the Queen decades and generations later in 2005. Her grandson Prince Harry sparked outrage when he went to a costume party dressed as a Nazi. Then a 20-year-old, the Prince quickly released a statement of apology. Elizabeth's another big moment of embarrassment was the Mexit. When her grandson Prince Harry announced his engagement to Meghan Markle, the world applauded the British monarchy for transforming and becoming modern. Meghan was non-British, of a mixed race and an actor. But everything went all right and in 2020, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle announced that they will be stepping back from senior royal duties. The couple with their just-born child, Archie, moved to California in America. A year later, in March 2021, Meghan and Harry gave a tell-all interview to Oprah Winfrey about their rift with the royal family, revealing one bombshell after another. They alleged 
that the members of the royal family had concerns and conversations about how dark Archie's skin could be before he was born. Megan also opened up about having suicidal thoughts. The wealth of Queen Elizabeth created an outpour of discontent in 1992 and the Prime Minister John Major announced that the Queen will pay taxes from 1993. Her wealth came back in controversy in 2021 when reports alleged that the Queen successfully lobbied the government to change the draft law in order to conceal her embarrassing private wealth from the public. The arrangement which was concocted in the 1970s was used in effect to create a state-backed shell corporation that placed a veil of secrecy over the Queen's private shareholdings and investments until at least 2011. The biggest scandal in the history of the royal family turned out to be Queen Elizabeth's son, Prince Andrew. He was allegedly accused of sexual assault by Virginia Guffaw, a minor, during the time of the incident. Virginia claimed that she was forced to have sexual relations with this prince when she was a minor in three separate geographical locations. She accused the prince and his billionaire friend Jeffrey Epstein of keeping her as a sex slave. Prince Andrew said he had no regrets about his association with Epstein. The statement received enormous public backlash. In early 2022, as the civil suit against him was still on, Andrew was stripped of his honorary military roles as well as his royal patronage. He was barred from using the title His Royal Highness in official settings. It certainly has not been all rainbows and sunshine for Queen Elizabeth II. Yet she managed to lead all the public service duties for 69 long years. Today is Queen Elizabeth II's last day of flying in state before the state funeral on Monday and here are the top, top defining images. <clears throat> Indian President Draupadi Murmu arrived in London late Saturday evening to attend the Queen's funeral and offer condolences on behalf of the Indian government. Murmu to attend reception for world leaders hosted at the Buckingham Palace by King Charles III on Sunday evening. President Joe Biden has arrived in London to pay his respects to Queen Elizabeth II. Biden expected to sign the official condolence book and attend a reception on Sunday at Buckingham Palace hosted by King Charles III before attending the funeral on Monday. Japanese Emperor Naruhito and Empress Masako arrived in Britain on Sunday to attend Queen Elizabeth II's funeral to pay respect to her and the British royal family who are considered a model for Japan's monarchy in modern history. King Charles III held audience with Prime Ministers including Justin Trudeau of Canada, Anthony Albanese of Australia, Philip Davis of the Bahamas, Andrew Holness of Jamaica and New Zealand's Jacinda Arter. All eight of Queen Elizabeth II's grandchildren stood vigil beside her coffin in Westminster Hall on Saturday. Entering together, they stood by the Queen's coffin lying in state, draped in her royal standard and capped with a diamond-studded crown. Kate and Meghan's jewellery worn for a royal service following the procession of Queen's coffin from Buckingham Palace to the Palace of Westminster has gone viral. Here is more on the jewellery that once belonged to the late Queen, our Lifestyle Bureau, with this report. Kate Middleton and Meghan Markle attended a service following the procession of the Queen's coffin from Buckingham Palace to Westminster Hall, wearing jewellery that held a personal connection to Queen Elizabeth II. Kate wore one of the Queen's famous brooches, the diamond and pearl leaf brooch that reportedly was loaned to her in 2017 by the late Queen. 
The diamond and pearl earrings worn by Meghan were a gift from the Queen too. Queen Elizabeth II gifted these to her before the royal engagement in 2018. Meghan also fondly described this to Oprah Winfrey in an interview about how she was gifted those by the then Queen in the train on the way to the engagement. Kate's earrings, in fact, were Diana's favourite. They are called Collington Pearl Drop earrings and both have been spotted wearing them in the past. Kate's three-row pearl bracelet was in fact designed for late Diana in 1988. Lifestyle Bureau, India Today. With that is a wrap on this special show, but we're leaving you with this. President Draupadi Murmu in London to attend the Queen's funeral on Monday. President Murmu paid homage to departed British Queen Elizabeth II in London and signed the book of condolences.